Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I make beer. Today we're brewing something special, the Belgian Triple, a style with deep roots in Belgium's Trappist monasteries. Specifically, it was West Mall Brewery in the early 1930s that perfected this golden, potent ale known for its subtle, spicy, and fruity notes. So grab your gear and join me as we pay homage to this classic, crafting a triple that echoes the rich tradition of West Mall. Cheers to a great beer and great history. Let's see how it's done. So we're adding in our salt. And then we'll get our grains ready. The recipe for this one, seven pounds Pilsner, 7.6 ounces of red wheat malt, 4.2 ounces of Munich 20, 0.25 ounces of Magnum, and that was at 60 minutes, 0.52 ounces of size at 15 minutes, and a pound of the candied syrup at 15 minutes. And then we used Abbey Ale White Labs WLP 530. All right, so we're at our temp. We're gonna pop this down to 127. And we're gonna start adding in our grain. I don't know if I said anything. I'm only making a two and a half gallon batch. Oh, it looks like we're all mixed up, right? It looks like it, guys. Can you see? Can you see it? All right. So we're mashing at 127 for 20 minutes. So we are raising temperature, our time is up. What was our time? 20 minutes. And now we're going up to 152. So it's 1046. With, I don't know, 10 minutes left. It's supposed to be 1050. But that's okay. We've been in this position before. All right, so we're at boil. Sixty-five is usually a good. Set a timer for forty-five minutes. How long? Forty-five minutes. All right, so we got 15 minutes left in the boil. We're adding the rest of our size hops, which was half ounce, Werflock tablet, and nutrient. So that's in. I'm also gonna hit the pump, start recirculating so I can clean the um, counterflow chiller. I'm using my counterflow chiller this time instead of the um, plate chiller that comes with the claw hammer system. I'm using the Whirlpool arm. Um, I noticed last time that the plate chiller sort of clogged up and the flow going through was very minimal. Um, this one currently is flowing pretty good. So I'm gonna start the timer back up once we get back up to a boil because currently it stopped. And then I'll put the timer on for 15 minutes. So anyways, we got our whirlpool going. As I said, we'll let that go for a while. 15 minutes to be exact. Then we will um, let it settle out. So what's a brewer day without a mistake? Um, also at 15 minutes left in the boil, I was supposed to add my candied sugar and, and it's a syrup and I forgot. 
So I just added it now during a whirlpool and it was down to like 100 degrees at the time. So, oh well, I would definitely won't be scorched. Two weeks later. So, um, I just finished up brew day. Uh, I got it clean, but I also had to get this fermenter out of my fermentation chamber because I didn't have room for the, the other fermenter. So what's in here is my, uh, supposed to be my Belgian uh, triple. Uh, it's gonna be more like a Belgian double. Uh, I'm trying to keep as much oxygen out of it as I can. So I'm just barely uh, putting in about two pounds of uh, CO2 right now. And then <clears throat> you can see on the other side here, um, I got this open. I got it into a two and a half gallon keg. Uh, I was going to bottle condition this, and then I was thinking about, you know, filling each bottle and all that stuff. And I really wouldn't be able to use my bottle filler um, the way this is. just wouldn't work out very well. So what I decided to do is I put some uh, Lalamand um, CBC1, which is their yeast for cask and bottling conditioning. So I put that into the keg. And then Beersmith gave me two options for corn sugar. Um, and that was, sorry. Uh, if I was bottling carbonation option, uh, the corn sugar should have been two ounces for the volume that I have here. Uh, but it also gives me uh, corn sugar if I'm gonna keg it, uh, keg carbonation. So it gave me one ounce. And so I sort of tossed that around and I decided to go with about 1.4 ounces. So I'm a little bit above one and a half uh, or halfway between, a little less than halfway between. Um, I also had to do some reading because uh, the instructions on the Lalaman packet uh, are not all that great. Um, I didn't really understand what they were trying to tell me here. So I ended up doing a lot of research here, trying to figure out how much to use. And I found one, uh, an individual that uses this uh, often. And what he does is he goes with two grams per five gallons. I'm doing two and a half grams, or excuse me, I'm doing two and a half gallons, so I'm only using one gram. And then he just sprinkles it on top of the beer as it's being racked into the bottling bucket. I'm not using a bottling bucket, but the same idea. Um, then stirring any yeast floating on the surface uh, in with the priming sugar. So as I said, um, this was already cold crashed. It was at 34 degrees, uh, it was like 38 when I, I took it out or when it's been before I started this. So I put in the um, 1.4 ounces of corn sugar into the keg. I put in the one gram of the Lalamand um, conditioning, bottle conditioning yeast. Uh, then I purged the keg. Um, it already been star sand and sanitized and everything. So then I just purged the keg with CO2. Um, and now I'm just filling it. So I, I hope that I alleviated as much oxygen as possible. After this is uh, been fermenting. I'm gonna let it sit for approximately three months, um, which will probably be like minutes because of the video. Um, but I'm just gonna let it uh, carbonate and condition right in the keg. So I'll sit it out here. It'll sit in the basement, which is 65 degrees most of the time uh, right now during these winter months. <clears throat> and then once that's done, either I will keep it in the keg or I'll bottle it or I'll probably split it. I'll probably bottle some so I can just let them stay conditioning. And then I will also um, put the rest on tap just to have it, I guess. We'll see. Depends on how much I have going at that time. So, but we'll see in like minutes because I will then be telling you because it'll be three months later. So anyways, that's what we got going. So I got to clean up from the brew day. Hopefully this will finish filling the keg shortly. Um, I'm really pushing it out slow. So um, it seems like it's taking a little bit of time. I eh, might be getting close down to the bottom. It's getting close. So we'll see. Much, much, much later. 
Hey, Brew Buddies. Welcome back to I Make Beer. Today we're diving into the Divine, a Trappist Triple, or a Belgian, I guess we can call it that. This has been bubbling away for approximately four and a half months. Uh, the Belgian beer is probably one of my favorite beers. Uh, I really love these. Just don't make them a lot because uh, they're usually pretty high alcohol. So I try not to drink these too often, but they're a great beer. Let's set the stage with a little style intro. Uh, so the trap is triple. It's like the life of the party, but not in a, whoa, take it easy kind of way. It's got that deep gold color that might just remind you of a treasure and a complexity that says, I'm not your average brew. And Trappists are not your average brew. So a little on the stats. Uh, so this uh, came in, original gravity was 1.083. Um, pretty much, you know, go big or go home type of beer. And then we finished it off at 1.008. So it did finish drier than it uh, was estimated at, um, but actually it's uh, still turned out really well. I'm not too worried about the lower gravity. So it's 8.4%. Um, this is the type of beer that you'll definitely want to sit down and chill with. You're not going to be um, playing softball and drinking this one. So appearance. Um, so it's definitely a gold color. Maybe it's hard to see. I'm not sure how this looks on camera. Uh, it is hazy. I think that's contributed to the uh, yeast when I was uh, keg conditioning this. So I had add, added yeast and some sugar into the keg to uh, condition it. So I think there's still some yeast uh, suspension in this. I did end up having to finish this out with CO2. Uh, it did not carb as high as I anticipated. The keg that I was conditioning this in, all I did was just put it into the keyser and uh, add. Let's get into the aroma. Uh, it's got... Foam, it's got foam. <clears throat> so it's got a, a significant spiciness to it, uh, like peppery uh, aroma to it. Some fruity esters, I'm getting like an orange uh, in it. You don't, you're not getting the waff of the alcohol off of this. I'm also not getting the banana esters, like sometimes you get with a Travis. I'm not getting that with this one. Maybe it's a hint. I mean, it's low. It's hard to, it's hard to pick up. Um, you're getting the floral, uh, you're getting some malt complexity, character to it, and um, a little bit of a, like a grainy sweetness. Let's go in for a taste. Oh, God, I love these. So you're definitely getting that spiciness. There's, there's a definite spiciness to it. Um, some fruit, you're getting a little alcohol flavor, but it's um, pretty soft. Um, soft, rounded, uh, grainy, like a sweet malt impression. I'm getting a hint of honey. It's really low. <clears throat> but the peppery uh, spiciness is definite. Uh, on the forefront, um, and then the the citrus fruit, like an orange, uh, as I said, they're lower, but they're good. Alcohol uh, is not really uh, prominent. Um, like if you're gonna sit down and drink these, um, make sure you're sitting down when you're drinking these. Um, these these will definitely uh, hit you pretty hard, and you're not even gonna realize it because it's such a good beer, and the the alcohol burn is so low. Bitterness, uh, low bitterness. It's not, a, you know, it's not a lot of bitterness coming through. Um, and uh, it finished up at, like I said, 1.008. So it, it definitely has a dryness at the end. Um, I mean, you can feel it. It's, it's dry. Uh, there's some sweetness uh, remaining in here. Even though it finished out so low, you're still getting a bit of a, a sweetness from the, the, like the malt. And mouthfeel.
I'd say it's a light to medium uh, body. Um, carbonated real well, you know, good effervescence from it. <clears throat> the alcohol content is very deceptive and there's really no, like you don't, you're not getting, it's not like a winter warmer where you're getting a, that warming sensation. You're not getting that from this. Um, as I said, at 8.4%, um, you know, this isn't as high as some triples. Uh, this actually should have been around nine uh, based on Beersmith. Uh, just the mishap with the candied sugar, I think, putting it in late. Uh, I'm not sure if that affected it. I mean, I'm still getting the sugar in there and, you know, it, it definitely dried out. I think my efficiency was off just a hair. So in my um, Beersmith, uh, I don't think I, I should have changed my efficiency a little bit more, especially when you're doing big beers. I would try and lower that efficiency because it just doesn't work out as well as the mid range uh, ABV beers. But uh, otherwise, it, it came out great. You know, as I said, it should have been, I think it was a, supposed to be a, like a, I think it was supposed to be 1.092, I think, or 90, 1.90, yeah. 1.090 was supposed to be the original gravity. Uh, and as I said, this was 8.3. This was supposed to finish up around 101.5s, and it finished up at 101.008. So the offset of those two gravities, the ABV is still where it's supposed to be, maybe just a hair lower, but there should have been, should have been some more residual sugar left in this beer. So it probably would have had a little bit more of a sweetness to it. But overall, uh, even though it's not as sweet as I think it probably should have been, beer came out really good as i said i really love my belgians uh you know my doubles my triples my quads you know you, i love this style of beer so before we finish up please like and subscribe you know say it every time every youtuber does but let's raise a glass folks here's to a beer that's not just a drink but an experience and this is an experience Cheers. Catch you next time.